If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Chalice of the Void here, wait a minute. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glistener Elf here with another Chalice of the Void deck for Legacy. Chalice of the Void is an extremely powerful card as you can imagine, when some of the most played cards in the format are Brainstorm and Ponder and Deathrite Shaman and all those sorts of things. Chalice isn't a one for one, it's a one for about 20, <laughs> or however many of those show up over the course of the game. So let me show you Eldrazi Stompy, one of the best Chalice of the Void decks in Legacy right now. It doesn't get hit by Chalice at all, and it gets to run four, as well as some other disruptive pieces. Eldrazi themselves usually, with the exception of Thought Knots here, aren't terribly disruptive, but they're enough for, obviously they broke modern, they can be a vintage archetype, and we have a lot of soul lands. A soul land is like soul ring, one that makes more than one mana, it makes two mana. So let me show you, or in the case of Ayabugan, quite a bit more than that. So let me show you, we're going to start off with our creatures. Uh, most of the Eldrazi, again, are big dumb creatures, and Endless One is the primary one. Enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters aren't, so whether you're having it in your opening hand or top decking it late in the game, this will actually be useful for something. Making this an 8-8 eight eight is rather nice when we get to that stage in the game. But usually your aggro one is uh, Eldrazi Mimic. This one comes out early as soon as turn one uh, for potentially zero mana and becomes a 5-5, five five, or whatever Endless One ends up being later on in the game. So this gives you your early beats because of the other ones that we have. Uh, not most especially Mattery Shaper. Mattery Shaper feels a little bit like if you've seen Leovold decks running around everywhere, in that if you try to interact with it by uh, targeting it, well, not targeting, this is when it dies, then you'll get a card, not necessarily to your hand, you might even put it straight onto the field, and usually you will, you better than a coin toss to do that. Otherwise, it's a 3-2, and that replaces itself for as little as effectively one mana. Uh, we'll get to the lands, and I'll show you more about that, but the big one is Thought Not Seer. It is a four mana, but not actually, 4-4, four, four, so big dude, on its own, you know, if we're getting it on turn one or two, a 4-4 four, four is not bad, but it actually lets you look at their hand <laughs> and you choose a non-land and exile it. Now, if they happen to uh, deal with this, if they make it leave the battlefield, source to apply shares or something, uh, uh, an activated, a uh, what's not, not morbid, a revolt fatal push, then they'll get a card back. But often you're taking something that would be able to deal with this, and again, you have Chalice. So, Thought Not Seer, oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. Alright, next, we go even bigger than that. We'll talk about big dumb creatures. This is the biggest, dumbest creature of them all. This is the Hulk in the deck. This is Reality Smasher. It's just a 5-mana Trample Haste 5-5. Five five. It does make it a little bit harder on the opponent to deal with it by forcing them to it will counter that spell unless they discard a card. Uh, but, nevertheless, it's just a big dumb creature. <laughs> That's it. Now, if we're running all of these Eldrazi, when was the last time that you saw Endbringer, and yet this can come out on turn 3? It's a 5-5, five five. yeah, you can attack with it, but check this out. During each other player's untap step, you get to untap it. So you can attack with it, and there's not much of an opportunity cost. It's not Vigilance, but it feels like Vigilance. But it also gets some extra little effects. In a multiplayer game, like a you know 3-player, 4-player EDH, you'll get to untap quite a few times, but otherwise you can pay one mana and tap it to uh, make a creature unable to attack or block, you can pay no mana and tap it to ping target, I think it's any target actually, yeah it is any target, or you can pay two mana, and I, I say two mana, it's two colorless mana, to tap it and draw a card. So <laughs> if you need to overcome some card advantage engine, well there you go. Now these are the Eldrazi themselves. Big, dumb creatures, one and all. We have disruptive elements. Of course, we're going to be running four Chalice of the Void. You know what this does. We're going to get it out on turn one, put Chalice on one, usually. And even if we have to put on another number, say Chalice on two, we happen to have Cavern of Souls, which we'll get to in just a moment, which will make our creatures uncounterable, so it'll break the symmetry anyway. Uh, but Chalice of the Void isn't all that we're running. We actually are also using Thorn of Amethyst. That way we have even more to bring in against combo decks. Whether we're on the player draw, unless they're going off on the first turn, we'll get a Chalice or a Thorn in most games. I think it's about two-thirds of the time we'll have at least one Chalice or at least one Thorn. So we'll have quite a bit most of the time. As for 
trying to outrace aggro decks, uh, Umazawa's Jite, there's very little opportunity cost in just having one, especially when we can get it out on the first turn and equip it shortly thereafter as well. So it, it's fine to have one. It fits on any of these creatures. Even tiny Eldrazi Mimic, when it doesn't have something, appreciates it. Now, if we want to get Chalice and say we don't have, not all of our lands make two mana, but we want to get Chalice on one or Thorn, we have three Simian Spirit Guides. We literally cannot cast these in the deck unless we go Cavern Name Ape. Or, I guess, Spirit. If we name Ape, it's a little too on the nose, perhaps. Uh, but all these do is they help us to have greater consistency in getting out our turn one plays, or getting one of these out a little bit sooner than we would have otherwise. So that's this package. As for the lands, let me show you real quick what we're doing with all of that. Whatever, set them all over here. So our soul lands, we start off with four Ancient Tomb, very simply, tap it, add two colorless, we lose, it deals us two damage, but we don't care. <laughs> if you're getting a Chalice on one, you probably don't care. And then we have two City of Traders. Now this is a little awkward, if you, when you play a land, you have to sack it. So unfortunately, if it's your first land, you're gonna have a bad time sometimes, but that's all right, it makes two colorless mana, and if it's your last land that you have to play out, that's fine. And sometimes it's okay if you just absolutely have to have the chalice on one and that's your only soul land, sometimes you can just go for it. It's that good of a card. But, because we're Eldrazi, we have four Eldrazi Temple. It's one mana, or it's actually two most of the time. Uh, two mana to cast Eldrazi, well, colorless Eldrazi, but Eldrazi, or activate abilities of colorless Eldrazi, so you can use it on Inbringer if you have to. So that's nice. We have three Eye of Ugin. Only three because it is legendary, and it doesn't make mana on its own. So there is a, an opportunity cost. It's not like, say, Caracas, where we can tap it to make some mana, then play the next one, and get something more out of it. Unfortunately, no. In the early game, this lets us play our, our hand so quickly. Because it doesn't tap for two mana, it just makes them cost two less. Mimic, 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 and then on the next turn, like a, a Thought Not Seer. Yeah, it, it gets silly. I have Ugin is sick. And in the late game, we can actually use that last ability. I've actually never activated it. The game has ended before then, but we can use it as a, an engine to get our colorless creatures out. So whichever Eldrazi we want. That gets tough for the opponent. As another ramp card, some of the time Gemstone Caverns will be a ramp card. If it's in your opening hand and if you're on the draw, then this is going to let you begin it, begin the game with it in play. You put it, you'll have to exile a card from your hand, so it's kind of like you were actually on the play. And that just gives you a, a slightly greater chance that you'll have two mana on your first turn. Next, of course, we're going to be running four Cavern of Souls, always naming Eldrazi. Just makes them uncounterable. Fights the blue decks. If you're running a tribe in Legacy, or just a tribe, period, you're going to be wanting Cavern of Souls if you can. For our other utility cards, I'm running four Wasteland. Now, sometimes you'll see lists that, just to get more ramp, are running Cloud Post, Glimmer Post, etc. at Vesuva. They're running that package. We are not. We're running the utility package, so we're running things like Wasteland. It helps destroy our opponent's lands. We're playing Chalice and Thorn of Amethyst, so we're already kind of taxing our opponent, and Wasteland helps to secure that, in the same way that Death and Taxes uses it to supplement Thalia. Now, we also have two Scavenger Grounds. It is a main boardable graveyard hate card. We're not otherwise doing anything against graveyard decks in the main board, and it makes colorless mana. It's, it's certainly fine. I, it just gives you a little bit more against them. And, you know, we're running Soul Land, so you can actually go Scavenger Grounds, Ancient Tomb, and have enough to do it on the second turn of the game. That's pretty quick. Now... Uh, we also run Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. Occasionally it helps our opponent, but what this does is each land is a swamp in addition to its other land types. Every now and then, you will be able to actually tap Ivugan for mana as a result. Black mana, but mana nonetheless. And just like it did in Modern during Eldrazi Winter, that makes this a lot faster. Now because it's legendary, I'm only running as a one of same opportunity cost to it. And I also don't want to help my opponent occasionally. But there you go, that's that. And then lastly, one Caracas. Occasionally this will come up against Reanimator or Sneak and Show, or we can use it against what, what's a legendary card that we care about. Uh, but yeah, that's it. It's just, there's little, oh, I say it again, sound like a broken record. Just having one, there's very little opportunity cost. You don't lose much by having it. Okay, so now that we've covered the lands, we've covered everything in the main board, let's move on to the sideboard real quick. I am starting off for my removal suite, a few removal cards, all is dust. Now, it is a tribal Eldrazi, 
but you can't use Eye of Ugin on it because, unfortunately, unfortunately, let's go back to it. Eye of Ugin reads uh, Eldra Colorless Eldrazi. Wait a minute. What is? Wait a minute. Am I getting it backwards? Ah, uh, no. Edit this part, Jay. Edit, edit this part. Nope. Nope, that works. Oh, no, it's Cavern, it's Cavern you can't use. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm derpy. Cavern only works on uh, creature spells. You can't make your All is Dust uncounterable with Cavern of Souls, unfortunately. That being said, again, you can use Eye of Ugin and Eldrazi Temple on it. So this asymmetric wrath comes down super early if you need it to. That said, it's a lot of mana. Um, but... It's, it's, again, an asymmetric graph. It often just reads, you win the game. And it's each player sacrifices all colored permanent sacrifices. Alright, next we have Dismember. It's a one mana. If we don't care about our life total, then this, this is just great. Minus five, minus five beats so much in the format that isn't, again, some reanimator or sneak and show or cloud post or some deck like that. If it's any remotely fair deck or if it's a low to the ground combo deck like Infect, that'll get you there. We're also running a single copy of Warping Whale, which is our Swiss Army Knife, I guess. It's our utility card. It does a little bit of everything. Exiles, you know, Deathrite Shaman, Delver, Glistener Elf, Exiles, a <laughs> yeah, quite a bit with its first. Uh, with power or toughness, one or less, it can counter a sorcery spell, like a show and tell, for instance, and you can put a 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi Scion creature into play. Now, I actually can use this against Dredge, and the reason is you can... Put in the 1-1, one, one, and that 1-1 one, one has the ability to sack this creature, add colorless to your mana pool. You can use that to sack your creature to make your opponent lose all of their bridges from blow, bridge from blows. So this actually comes in against Dredge, and there's enough utility and enough matches I've considered putting more in. Feel free to add some more. You might very well be right. But I'm also inclined not to take out some number of Ratchet Bombs. Uh, there's so many uh, Pyromancer decks running around, so I'm making so many tokens that two mana destroy all their tokens. That's nice. And it also gets you, it's a catch-all. Eventually you can use this against any deck that's stalling for long enough. You can, you know, take out a, ah, uh, you don't care about counterbalance, but you do care about, like, Burn Brings in Ensnaring Bridge, you have Ratchet Bomb, or something like that. It's just a catch-all. If you don't know what to, oh, Blood Moon, there's another one, Blood Moon. <laughs> Alright, we're also running three copies of Sorceress Spyglass. If we see a deck that needs a, uh, an activation, then this will help to fight against it. So we can use it against Planeswalkers, we can use it against Grizzlebrand in those decks, we can use it against whatever we need in order to get this done. Now, whew, and some lands, by the way. Um, enters the battlefield, look at an opponent's hand, and choose any card name. So another is lands. If you expect Thespian Stage, uh, you can stop that. You can just say no to all of that. We're actually not quite done with the sideboard just yet, so let me consolidate this real quick. And we'll get to our last two options. Once again, for fighting graveyard decks, we have Leyline of the Void. We're obviously never going to be able to cast this. Never, ever. But if it's in our opening hand, and if we have all four, we have about a two in five chance to have at least one in our opening hand. It's an asymmetric graveyard hate card. I could run something like Graft Digger's Cage, but unfortunately that plays against our own Chalice. So I have to be a bit careful about running something like that. Same with Relic. Uh, you could do Tormod's Crypt, but it's not a permanent solution. Uh, and so on and so forth. And lastly, this one could be in the main board. It's Seagate Wreckage. I can bring this in against decks that will try to outgrind me. I can bring this in against... Or if I expect to, at some point, dump my hand. So, against Miracles, if they Wrath the board, I might be in a bit of trouble. Seagate Wreckage helps to draw me out of that. And that's, that's pretty much it. It gives me another land and an inevitability engine against those kinds of decks. So that's what I'm running. That is Eldrazi Stompy, Colorless Stompy... Uh, and it's exactly as dumb as it looks. And by dumb, okay, that's, that's the wrong word. It's not the hardest deck in the world to play. We're not talking Doomsday Combo or High Tide or something like that. We're talking about a deck that's more accessible for beginners to Legacy. It's a deck that will occasionally just give you some fairly easy free wins, and you're shutting the opponent down. As long as you uh, know what to set your chalice on, as long as you know what kinds of hands are keepable and, and whatnot, uh, there isn't a whole lot of agency to the deck, on the other hand. There aren't a lot of sequencing decisions relative to a lot of the more complicated decks in the format. And so if you're someone that likes deep nuance in your, in your deck building decision, your deck, your deck, your lines of play, there we go, this may not quite be the deck for you, but, on the other hand, in a long tournament, this isn't a terribly mentally taxing deck, so it has that going for it. Later on in the day, you'll have more energy to spend on making the right play. 
And that's Eldrazi. Uh, if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if there's anything you want me to deck tech later, let me know as well. I'll try to give it a shot. Alright, take care, Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye-bye!